Good afternoon and welcome to Motivation Speaks with Angel Ferguson. We thank you for joining us today during this three-part series of Seven Bags of Pride. And we are in part two. So we welcome you today as we take a look at some things that they, they have a positive as well as they can have a negative effect on our lives all depends on how we walk in them how we exercise them how we live them so we welcome you today to evaluate and explore where you are in Christ I do believe that we are in a time that we need to evaluate our relationships with Christ where am I in him am I being led by the Holy Spirit or am I being led by my emotions or my feelings or or what others might think or say and earlier today I was listening to a song in that the helmet of salvation is what we need during this time we need to hear from God not our opinions not our thoughts but we need to hear from God and and that is the helmet of salvation who are you hearing today what are you listening to what is speaking to your spirit I can say this if what you are hearing what you are listening to and and what you are applying to your life if it is not drawing you closer to God question it because what we hear should draw us closer to the true and living God what we hear should cause a conviction in our spirits that will cause us to examine our relationship with Christ to remind us that yes he said it and it shall be so so be very very careful of what you are listening to while you have on the helmet of salvation welcome to motivation speaks with angel ferguson we'll be back in just a moment It's great to stay connected with you, our listening as well as our reading audience. There are several ways in which you can connect with us and that we can connect with you. Our website being www.afergusonswrp.simplesite.com. Our email address is afergusonwrp at yahoo.com via our social media outlets, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Instagram, as well as our YouTube channel. You can also subscribe to our magazine, Hope and Truth, 12 issues at $36. And upon submission of requesting your registration for Hope and Truth magazine, we will email you a digital copy of the magazine. We have such fantastic freelance authors such as 
author Kit Swanson and author Chandra Mitchell. We share pages from our mentoring program, food for your soul, business tips and tools, other advertising, uh, information from our bookstore, and our publishing division. So check out Hope and Truth Magazine via hopeandtruthmagazine.weebly.com. On yesterday, we started a three-part series, Seven Bags of Pride. And this issue of our January magazine, Hope and Truth, you will find the entire write-up of Seven Bags of Pride. This is something that was led on, on my heart and in my spirit a couple of weeks ago. And as I always say, with even within our mentoring program, that as it is given unto me, I am the first partaker. So therefore, I have to write these things and, and then accept them and, and, and put them in my prayers and, and ask God for deliverance. I, I try to be very transparent within our mentoring program and even here on Motivation Speaks with Angel Ferguson I, because we are all human and no person is perfect. What we all have to realize and accept is this. Day by day we are given an opportunity to draw closer to Christ and everyone makes mistakes it is what happens with those mistakes that matters and I'm going to share a quote with you as I was in my morning meditation true deliverance begins with the acceptance of your reality we can't reach our deliverance until we accept our reality of where we were, where we are, and in that process receive a glimpse of where God is trying to take you. But we must start with the reality of where we are. And that brings me back to the seven bags of pride. On yesterday, we shared the Webster's version of pride as well as the Bible Dictionary's version of pride. And, and pride, when it becomes a hindrance, it's when we exalt ourselves, our abilities, our gifts above the one who gave it to us nothing that we could ever do should be exalted above Christ he God created all things all things were created by him and for him and sometimes because we are human we tend to forget we tend to not acknowledge just who blessed us with those spiritual gifts and and we tend to rely on our own ability and there are some things that uh, while dealing with my own areas of pride the following things were brought to light for me and it is my prayer that in your own search for a closer walk with Christ that he will enlighten the areas in your life that hinder the fullness of God operating in your life. It is my prayer that you experience Ephesians 3 and 19, that you, that the fullness of God will operate in your life, that you will experience the fullness of Him. And the only way to experience the fullness of God is, is through 
a pattern, a, a, a series, if you will. First, we are called into repentance and we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth that He, Jesus, is God is His is His Father. That that God gave His only begotten Son, being Jesus. I truly believe and I confess it that He came in the form of of a man he came through the birth of the Virgin Mary that he walked he ministered he taught he was crucified he was hung on a cross he died he was buried but I believe with everything that's in me and my heart that he arose on the third day and he rose with all power in his hand. I accept Jesus as my Lord, being my guide. And I accept him as my Savior, my Deliverer. And as we cultivate and grow a life of prayer, being in the Word of God, fasting, allowing ourselves to be led by the Holy Spirit, and that's something else that we all must understand. You have to accept that guidance. We are guided. We are given instructions. We can hear it, and we can ignore it. But I encourage you, as I encourage myself, not to ignore the guidance of the Holy Spirit. It is another avenue of drawing us closer to God the Father. We must be willing, humble, with all lowliness and, and meekness. To accept that guidance because here's the thing about pride when we're walking in the flesh pride is so strong pride says I know what I'm doing pride says I have it all under control but if you accepted Jesus as your Lord being your guide we have to learn to trust him enough that he has all things under control and that he cares for the things that I care about, that I'm concerned about, that he has my best interests at heart. He's not going to deceive me. He's not going to lead me wrong. Everything that has been set up and designed for me, everything that has been designed and set up for you, for God has a plan just for you. But we must be willing to trust in our Lord and our Savior. And 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 I, I absolutely am falling in love with that every time it hits my spirit that He is my Lord and my Savior, meaning He is in more than one capacity. Meaning that He is able to cover the dimensions all around me, all around you, because He is my Lord and Savior. He is the true and living One. And so I pray that, that you gain that concept, that he is your Lord and Savior, as you have believed in your heart and that you confess with your mouth. He is more than just 
one aspect. There is so much to him, and I pray that a revival hits your spirit. That you are quickened. That your hunger and your thirst and your desire to learn more about him, that it increases and that it intensifies. That you will get into a position of prayer. That the word of God is, is open and revealed unto you. So that you can begin to see spiritually just who he is. Just who the Father is. Jesus and the Holy Spirit. A awesome trinity in one many aspects many characteristics many many attributes and there are some things that 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 lie dormant within us pride pride will keep you from a multitude of blessings pride will keep you from ministering to the next soul, pride can keep you from the knowledge of Christ. Pride will tell you, I don't need guidance. Pride will tell you, I'm not handicapped, I'm not sick, I'm not, I'm not without, I, I, I have it all under control. But the very essence of you is crying out. But because we walk after the flesh, pride will keep you from seeking beyond your sick position. And it's not healthy. So I pray today that the spirit of pride that lurks and lies dormant in so many of us in so many ways I plead the blood of Jesus over your life today that that spirit is uprooted and cast back into the pits of hell from whence it belongs and that it it is replaced with the humble spirit meekness I tell you that a lot of times we suffer not because it's a test of our faith, but it is because of our pride. We thank you for joining Motivation Speaks with Angel Ferguson. We'll be back in just a moment. And welcome back to Motivation Speaks with Angel Ferguson. We thank you so very much for joining us today as we are talking about the seven bags of pride. And we are in part two of a three-part series. This three-part series in its entirety has been included within our January issue of Hope and Truth magazine. And you can preview a copy of Hope and Truth magazine via issue.com. Therefore, you can read it in its entirety. And if you would like a copy, 
of just this portion alone of seven bags of pride, feel free to email us at aferguson.wrp at yahoo.com. If you are looking for custom logos and designs for your business, organizations, or even perhaps for your personal usage, contact No Mercy HMX Exclusives. The email address is jamesf at nomercyhmx.com, specializing in book cover designs, logos, t shirt designs their images are absolutely awesome so check them out today send an email to james f at no mercy hmx.com for a consultation as you are in the new year 2018 and perhaps you'd like to remodel your home or your place of business Check out Upscale Resale Consignment Furniture. The address is 1432 Main Street, Dunedin, Florida, 34698. The website is www.upscaleresalefurniturdunedin.com. The telephone number is 727-831-3371. We are talking about the seven bags of pride and I can definitely tell you that this is something that uh, God has been dealing with me about and and it's not something that it, it's a uh, one time you know, it, it's it's every day that we have to learn how to cast down every every imagination, every everything that that tries into it to exalt itself above Christ. We are supposed to take pride in, in, in our character, especially when you are walking after the Spirit and, and in the fruit of the Spirit. You are supposed to, you know, have good character about you. And, and, and I acknowledge Christ in everything that I do. I know who has given me and anointed me to do what I do as far as my career as being a mother, as being a daughter, it, I acknowledge him in everything that I do. But there have been times that, hey, look what I've done. And it's, it's not me, but it's him that's in me. Greater is he that, in, that is in me than he that is in the world. It's not by my ability that I am able to perform and do these things, but by his ability alone, because without him, I can do nothing. Truly, without him, I would fail. Without him, I would not know how to love, not just my brothers and sisters, but those that I, I, I get a chance to to meet, I wouldn't know how to treat them. I would not know how to truly embrace them without him. But when we are walking after the flesh, we can develop this assertiveness that that I I'm all that and without him we are nothing he created us I know a couple of weeks ago we we did a segment your purpose your position is not your purpose your position has 
allowed a platform for your purpose. And anytime we put that position over our purpose, we are walking in pride. So in every avenue that I'm given, whether it is here on the radio, in writing, in mentoring, whatever avenue that I am given, whatever platform I am given, I acknowledge Christ in everything that I do. He created those avenues just for me. Without the guidance of the Holy Spirit, those avenues would not have been open or allowed to remain open. That's another thing that pride, when we are walking after the flesh and we are exalting our, our, our knowledge, if you will, our book knowledge, or even our experience, when we are exalting it above Christ, those avenues can be shut. What we have to take into an account is that the platforms were created so that we can reach souls for Christ. It's not about us. It's not a popularity contest. If we are on social media, it's not about gaining likes or who shares your content. Our job is to share the true gospel, spiritual words of inspiration. It's up for those who come across it to receive it. Because truly I believe one plants one waters, but it's God that gives the increase. Now here's something that I've, I've heard other individuals say, and I've come across, across it so many times within the mentoring program. They would like to be motivational speakers and share words of inspiration, but it just seemed that no one liked it when they posted it. And here's my advice if you find yourself in that position that after you share those words of inspiration or or those spiritual words and you're not getting a response and you're you're contemplating well maybe this isn't for me and you've backed up and you've stopped I came by to tell you today it's not your job to make sure that they receive it it's your job to share it Be obedient. When you're being guided and led by the Holy Spirit to share those words, those spiritual words, those words of encouragement, those scriptures, those prayers, you be obedient. It's not, a, it's not about who liked it or who shared it or, or who gave you a comment. That's not what it's about. When you are focusing on those things, you are walking in pride. You are walking in the flesh. Your job is to deliver the word the way he gave it to you. Not to sugarcoat it. Not to add to it. Not to take away from it. But to deliver it the way he gave it to you. you are in a position to plant another person is in a position to water but ultimately he gives the increase and the thing about pride pride will take you out of where you're supposed to be and try to make you exalt yourself to where you're not supposed to be but we have no heaven or hell to put anyone in you can't save anyone from their sins. You're not the Savior. You're not Lord. You're a vessel. You have a commission. 
you have a call upon your life. That's your purpose. Walk therein. Not according to the flesh, but be led by the Spirit. Pride will tell you no one's reading it. It's not effective. But that's walking in the flesh. And I can guarantee you, if you continue to walk in the flesh and the walk in the in the spirit of pride, those seeds aren't they're not being planted because you, you did it a, a at the wrong course. Your spirit wasn't right when you did it. So evaluate the spirit in which you do what it is that you were called to do. Because here's the understanding that I have. We can know our call. God has called you. He's or, he has ordained you. And he can lead and guide you. But when you set out to do what he has called you to do, examine the spirit in which you do what you were called to do. Pray before you do it. Bind every spirit in you that wants to exalt itself above Christ. Humble yourself. And I, and I say this with all sincerity. If you have a haughty spirit... Do not move forward until that spirit has been lifted. Because what happens is when we move in a haughty spirit and in a spirit of pride, that pride is actually blocking and hindering that word to be received by the souls that are waiting on that word. And here's something else that we must gain the knowledge of as you are fulfilling the call upon your life. Those that are close to you that you think would be so receptive of that word. It's not for them. There's a soul so far away in another country at the end of this earth that that word is for, but you're trying to appease and show yourself so effective to those that know you. But if you take a look at the life of Jesus, as we are to pattern our lives after him because he was that great example his own countrymen did not receive him because they felt that they knew him. They knew his name. They knew his mother's name. They knew where he grew up, but they did not know him. Do not allow pride to hinder your call. Do not allow pride to stop or block those who are waiting to receive that word. We're going to take a break and when we come back we're going to take a look at some things dealing with pride. Uh, some things that as I begin to write that I, I I sat back and I looked and I God knows us and and I and I'm going to say this before we go to the break God knows us and when you are real with him he'll be real with you we'll be back in just a moment
Welcome back to Motivation Speaks with Angel Ferguson. It is always a pleasure to spend time with you and and sharing with you uh, the Word of God as He deals it out to us. We pray that in some way that what is shared during our podcast will cause you to examine where you are. Where is my relationship with Christ? Am I in good standing with Him? Create in me a clean heart and a right spirit. Am I walking after the flesh? Or am I walking after the Spirit? And as we are dealing with some things that lie dormant in our lives, as we are growing closer to Christ, I pray that as we are dealing with the spirit of pride and its negative effects, that it is replaced with humbleness and meekness and lowliness in our lives. Anytime we pray for something to be removed from our lives, we are to pray that something within the fruit of the Spirit is replaced. Never leave that place void. It's just like a room. When a room is cleaned, every area of that room must be cleaned. Every crack and corner must be cleaned. And it must be, as we are cleaning out, we are replacing. And we're not replacing with anything that is temporal. And where, where I want you to see it is on the spiritual side. So imagine that room that you're in or, or as you walk into your home or wherever you might be. When you get home or get into your place of business or, or where have you, take a look at that room. And there are some things that are unprofitable and some things that we need to remove. But my God, deal with me on what is the replacement. And as we mentioned yesterday, if you have dealt with an argumentative spirit a spirit of anger as we are dealing with those things and and you're taking those things to the Father and you're binding those things in your life pleading the blood of Jesus over your life being delivered and set free and that's that Savior so here here's where we come in with our Lord because he will guide you to those areas in your life that need to be removed that profit you nothing that are hindering your growth and then therein comes in him as savior savior meaning deliverer he will deliver you from and he will deliver you in two. He will deliver you from your old life of anguish and self pride and lust of the spirit, lust of the flesh, demonic holes. He will deliver you from 
those things and deliver you into a life of spiritual freedom that will overlap into your natural life that you can truly walk in love and in peace and in joy and in harmony that you will come to the knowledge of him to fulfill your purpose in his divine will and as we go through these different things and, and even as, as as we are sharing this there are some other things that, that God is going to allow us to share here a Motivation Speaks with Angel Ferguson Seven Bags of Pride was just the beginning another area that we're going to discuss in a series is dressed for this purpose and I'll give you just a little bit on that at the end of today's podcast that we're going to touch on next. But first, I want to give you a couple of areas that pride is connected to. Pride is connected to the lust of control. It's connected to the I factor. Pride is connected to running to escape shame. Pride is connected to a false reality. Pride is denying the power of God because of relying on one's self. We're dealing with the seven bags of pride if you would like a copy of the entire write-up for seven bags of pride please feel free to email us at a ferguson wrp at yahoo.com and you will have the opportunity to review Hope and Truth magazine in its entirety via issue.com where you can just take a look and 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 really get the, the full aspect of the seven bags of pride. There are seven prayers, seven scriptures. connect it to the seven bags of pride and and as we wrap up this series we will take a look at the scriptures as well as the prayers for seven seven bags of prayers and 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 as I as I begin to write this and 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 just to look at the scriptures how they are identified and, and, and the Word of God is a resource for everything that we need for everything that our Lord will guide us to that needs to be removed from our lives and the things that are holding us back and hindering us he has a place in the Word of God for it remember he is our Lord he is our guide so that is why we have the Word of God that is our guide the Holy Spirit is a guide see he left us with some prime examples and briefly uh, dress for the occasion what we're going to touch on on that is the whole armor of God I can't wait to get into that series I'm looking forward to it if you are looking for some activity check out studio 28 dance studio we love you here. Stay encouraged, encouraging others along the way. Have a blessed afternoon.